Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Paper Review, a Hit the Books sponsored uh, network show, I guess. Does that make sense? Anyways, Who are we sponsored uh, by? <laughs> we're sponsored by Hit the Books, our podcast, Mikey. <laughs> uh, we, we sponsor ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> what we're sponsored by yamaha rev your engine <laughs> uh i am ryan knight me ryan oh my god i am ryan knight and with me on the other end of that line is mikey manfredi mikey we are here to review fast lane the latest pay-per-view vroom, vroom. from wwe mikey what'd you think of it overall it was actually <laughs> it was like not even in terms of just being like oh it was fast it was good for a fast lane it was pretty good as a pay-per-view overall you think yeah i think as an overall pay-per-view it wasn't too bad Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it was uh it was pretty good um i think i personally i was less into it i understand that a lot of the matches were good but i think i was less into it just because of all the convoluted storytelling <laughs> yeah yeah how we got here um and i can i can touch on that it's later like, but it's uh, like wwe can't do a good storyline unless it's the most generic thing possible it's like when they actually have to put effort into their storylines they just get twisted and mangled like this <laughs> they get twisted and maggled maggled <laughs> i love it maggle um yeah so we are here to review fast lane by wwe um it was yeah it was a it was a, it was certainly a show and uh we got to go match th- by match mikey giving our meatball reviews five out of five meatballs is the j- goal um, as usual is as per usual per huge as per um, usual. we are here so uh mikey i guess we i'm not sure if you had a chance to start with a kickoff start with the uh you know kickoff new day versus rusev and nakamura um, uh, but I, I know I didn't, I sure didn't. That's fine, but we can still, at least we can't review the show or review that match, but we can at least talk about it. So of course, in that matchup, new day, we're able to defeat the team of Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev to get the victory. Neat. Um, what are your thoughts on the fact that of course, you know, Kofi mania is running wild and, uh, we starting off the whole kickoff, starting off the whole fast lane day, with a New Day victory um, against Nakamura and Rusev, what are your thoughts on you know the fact that New Day picked up the win here? Um, I mean, I kind of I think that's what I predicted happening. Um, I figured they wouldn't uh, stomp in the New Day's face that much, <laughs> uh, <laughs> especially with what happened later in the show. Mm-hmm. So I think them getting the win here makes the most sense because it kind of gives them a little thing to be like look back on on this night of terrible things that happened to them plus it definitely sets up uh the later into the match later into the show when nakamura and rusev came out to attack new day again you know it set up that part league of nations 2.0 Ooh, we got rusev we got sheamus we got cesaro we got nakamura we got ireland we got uh sweden we got uh, Sweet, you mean Switzerland? Switzerland, that's it. But we got Bulgaria, and we got Knock America. <laughs> <laughs> oh, long live the... the. I was going to say short-lived, but it didn't really live at all, now that I think about it. <laughs> um, well, I read a life and we couldn't think where... I knew it was something with an S, where Cesaro was from, and I'm sorry I messed it up. That was rude of me. No offense to anyone from Sweden or Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> and if you listen fine. <laughs> um let's move on to the actual show uh congratulations to new day of course xavier woods Big E picking up the victory there let's go on to the main card where shane mcmahon and the miz lost again to the usos um, this time with the miz going for a high flying move and it getting be- it getting reversed by one of the usos allowing the usos to retain the smackdown live tag team championships mikey what do you think about this matchup it was fine. When Shane in, when Shane intercepted the the splash with the coast to coast, that was cool. Right? That was probably my the, my highlight of the match. Yeah, that was definitely the the big the big moment of the match. That was cool. Um, the pin, that that final pin seemed like it was a little delayed. <laughs> like the yeah. knee, like the knees got up, and then it was like 
there was like a moment of just nothing, and then it was like, oh, I gotta roll them up. <laughs> yeah, there was a slight delay there. I'll, 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 I will point that out. There was a slight delay. Um, but yeah, the match was fine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I think I like this match more than in terms of, I guess, story or excitement level or whatever. Um, I think I like this match more than their Royal Rumble and Elimination Chamber matches. And by they, I mean McMahon and Miz. You mean their their two matches? Yeah, of, of their three matches, this may have been my favorite. Okay. Um, you know, it, it was still this match was still like you know good, decent. Um, whereas the other, the Royal Rumble match, the Elimination Chamber match, to me felt very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, this match, you know, played out a lot different. Shane starting out the match. Miz eventually getting the hot tag, obviously being in his hometown of Cleveland. Of course, of course. Um, we talked about the McMahon interception. That was a highlight for me. That was a great spot. Oh, yeah. Like, there was, it was, where the first two Royal Rumble Elimination Chamber matches felt very similar, this was definitely like, you know, we're we're changing it up. We're cha- we're doing different spots. We're doing different things. Mm-hmm. Um, they looked more cohesive as a tag team, McMahon and Miz. Which sadly, uh, which did meant not, nothing. <laughs> went, ended in nothing. Ended in uh, rot. Um, well, let's talk about that ending, Mag- Maggle. <laughs> Maggle. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the ending where Shane McMahon turned on the Miz and attacked him in front of Miz's father. Curse um, your sudden but inevitable betrayal. Mm-hmm. We all know that this is probably gonna happen. Um, but I'll say this, Mikey. Uh, and I'll probably say this a lot throughout the show. I loved how much the crowd was into this turn. Mm-hmm. Um, they were like, they're really behind the hometown guy. It was, you know, it wasn't great acting wise, no. um, but the crowd helped sell it well. I'm just yeah, excited no, to see Yeah, the crowd was very the- into it because it was their hometown boy getting beat up, and that can't happen. Mm-hmm. They, mm-hmm. they, Fastlane couldn't have been in a better place for this setup to happen. Yes. Which, knowing that now, it explains why it didn't happen at the Royal Rumble or Elimination Chamber. Yeah. I'm cool. I think I think it happening at Fastlane was perfect timing, even if it wasn't in Cleveland. I think it was good, because then we have a few weeks to build up this Miz McMahon feud for, I'm assuming, their WrestleMania match. Yeah. Uh, but Shane's got to get better at post-match beatdowns, because that was pathetic. <laughs> oh, why do you say that? Because it, it was just like... Some light punches, he, like, held him down and punched him a few times, and then he did, like, a really weird-looking triangle choke, <laughs> and Miz supposedly passed out, quote-unquote. I don't know, it just, like, like, we've seen some pretty nasty beatdown, like, pretty nasty, like, turn-heel beatdown. Like, look at Dean, look at the, the last Dean Ambrose-Seth Rollins turn. Like, Dean destroyed Rollins. Do you have a uh, a favorite post match beatdown moment, or the one that sticks out in your brain? Uh because for me, the one that sticks out in my brain the most is post match of I believe it was bragging rights, um, of B- Batista beating down Rey Mysterio. Okay, and Batista turning heel in the process. Mine's got to be, uh. Authors of Pain DIY ladder match. Ooh, of Tomasa course. Tommaso Ciampa beats down Johnny Gargano and starts the feud of the fucking century. <laughs> Ending, of course, in a <laughs> neck surgery. Oh yeah, that's still happening. <laughs> Yikes. He's he's recovering though. He's he's coming I hope he's coming back. I hope he'll be back by um takeover. Oh, no. No way. No way. Uh it, his deadline is six what is it, six to fourteen months? Is it actually? I didn't know it was that bad. It's neck surgery, my dude. There's fair enough. No, takeover, takeover is in four weeks. That's fair. Um, well, I'll look it up. I'm fairly certain six to fourteen months. Either I didn't way, know, I didn't know how severe it was because he was still he still has the title and whatnot. So I didn't. I don't know how long he was going to be gone. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I have no idea what's going to happen with that. I guess we'll find out eventually i don't know i mean currently wwe nxt is in the you know dusty roads classic so yeah diy is there uh and i feel like they had the inevitable johnny gargano turn on tommaso champa feud like coming in the dusty roads classic and then in the takeover before media we were gonna get finally johnny gargano 
versus Tommaso Ciampa, NXT Championship, and Johnny Gargano is finally going to defeat his demon. Yeah, well... That's uh, what I hoped would happen. Yeah, whether or not... That was probably the... to happen. That was probably the plan. Oh, yeah. Almost definitely. Um, Yeah, so hopefully, you know, Champa can recover as soon as possible and get in the ring back in the ring as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, he's going to be out for several months um for a neck procedure uh, was it known as undergo oh, he wanted to undergo a procedure known as an anterior cervical fusion yikes that sounds um according bad. to the marina spine center the average return timetable for athletes for such a procedure is nine and a half months Ugh, yikes so that puts them at past SummerSlam. <laughs> yeah maybe at the royal rumble jeez Maybe on the ne- maybe on the next road to WrestleMania. <laughs> maybe, maybe, and maybe we'll get that matchup at WrestleMania next year. <laughs> next, next takeover, next takeover before Mania. Um, but back to McMahon and Miz. Uh, yeah, uh, I thought it was a decent match. Um, obviously the post match beatdown was you know fine. It, it did its job in terms of storytelling, and they have all four weeks to uh, figure out what to go ne- with next. Um, Mikey, what'd you give it on the meatball scale? Um, I eh, like a three. It was fine. Like I said, it was a fine match. Okay. I gave it a 3.5 out of five meatballs. Okay. So we're about the same there. Moving on to Mandy Rose versus Asuka. Asuka is able to pick up the victory against Mandy Rose after Sonya Deville, like, looks for a weapon and then... Well, if I'm getting this, if I'm remembering this correctly, Mandy Rose trips on the apron, allowing Oscar to pick up the victory. Yeah, that was awkward. Mm-hmm. The ending of that match was pretty. Like, I don't think we need Sonya Deville ruining Mandy's chance just to win against Oscar because we were pretty sure Oscar was gonna win anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, like like Oscar could beat Mandy Rose without that. So I don't know why we needed that. <laughs> Um, I mean, it just seemed really weird. Yeah, if you look at it match style, like match, if you just look at it as a one-off, it was, you know, not that great in my opinion. It wasn't too hot for it. There were some mistakes. There were some good old spots in there. That, like, sort of black mask kick by Asuka to Rose. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Um, but if you look at it as sort of like a storyline angle, then, you know, it the job it had to do, I'm guessing was create tension between fire and desire to possibly break up or you know be able to fight um <laughs> I for guess... some f- f- why i guess we'll find out later maybe I... for a title match at wrestlemania maybe for something down the road later i was gonna say they're setting up like mandy rose versus sonia at mania because everyone's pretty sure oscar's getting evans even though evans has done literal nothing <laughs> I mean, who knows? I mean, you could you could make it a triple threat because um, not only the, now there tension, be, possible tension between Deville and Rose, um, you can make the argument that Rose did not lose completely clean to Asuka by tripping over that apron. So it sort of protects Rose and being able to argue like I could still challenge for the title because I didn't get beat, you know, one, two, three in the ring legitimately. Mm-hmm. So. I think I feel like the job of this match was to can stick with Rose being a possible contender and allow tension between them so that if we do get some sort of multi-man match at WrestleMania for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship or just the Women's Battle Royal, there's some tension there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think the multi-man match, I don't know if it's going to be Lacey Evans anymore because I literally have no idea what they're doing with her. She's literally um, just every every week she just walks around. <laughs> she just walks in it. and she walks out. I could see it being at WrestleMania maybe Asuka, Rose, Deville, Naomi. Okay. Throw Naomi in the mix, mix there. Um besides that, I mean maybe maybe you say Lacey Evans you know, just to put her, you know, be able to have a match for her, but also hide her amongst the other women. Mm-hmm. Poof, besides, I mean, I don't know. 
I don't know. We'll get to this later, but I was like, the story. I'm not sure what's happening in WWE anymore. <laughs> sounds sounds about right. Um, but yeah. So, like I said, I personally wasn't too hot on this match. There was some good spots, but there was some spots that looked kind of awkward and felt awkward. I gave this a two and a half out of five meatballs. Mikey, what'd you give this? Uh, exactly the same as you. I'm on the same boat. Two and a half. Like it was okay like it was just a lot of oscar offense mandy doing some stuff and then like that weird awkward tripping over the ring apron ending that i didn't Mm -hmm. like yeah it wasn't like a match match it was a storyline match yeah it didn't it didn't feel like a like like you like i don't know why wwe is so like oh in this match you can either tell a story or do a wrestling match do both (laughs) you can have if, if you don't do both have it like distinctly separate. Yeah. Like, like have it like this weird in between where it's like, oh look, there's some wrestling, but there's uh, uh, like mm-hmm. it just make like it just makes it feel awkward. Like this whole match just felt awkward. Mm-hmm. Like the pacing mm-hmm. of it was awkward. The whole ending was awkward. Sony Deville just like randomly lifting the apron, looking for a weapon the entire time was awkward. Mm-hmm. It also felt like maybe there's potentially that this match got cut time wise a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Um, which maybe to these next match, um, where it was revealed that Kofi Kingston was asked to see Vince McMahon after waiting around his office for an hour. Um, I liked when they went inside. in and Vince McMahon was like, I've been waiting for you. That seemed that was <laughs> that was either, very funny. <laughs> either a joke or the fact that like like that is like a commentary on like Kofi Kingston and Vince McMahon's relationship. I think like it's Kofi's a, such a company man that he just does what he's told, but it's like you're not taking, you're not going for the brass ring. I think it was a little both, right? Like, cause like it was like a funny thing, but also like you said, it's like that commentary of like Kofi like waiting for his opportunity, waiting for his opportunity, and New Day's like just get in there and take it, like just go in there. Mm-hmm. And Vince McMahon's like, I've been waiting for you to take it, you know? Yeah, and and he's still not even taking it. I feel like I feel like it's just all to turn around into like look at like the AJ Styles storyline with Vince McMahon for like hot second for one week mm-hmm. um, where it was like he wanted he wanted he wants AJ Styles to you know go for it you know he's got to be a, he's got to be an angry rough boy or whatever hit me daddy yeah oh geez um, <laughs> uh, it's like he's got to I think this whole thing is like if you look back at that like this is that Kofi Kingston spot where he's just like. He's like, hey, you got to go for it. You got to go for this time. I don't know. It's just something interesting. Yeah. Uh, I but think, it did I, think I like lead... that idea of it. For me, like, I guess I guess you pointing it out made me realize it because at first I was just like, oh, that's pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, it did lead into Kofi Kingston being uh, Ashton Kutcher. Kutcher'd. Um, he got faked out. He got, he got punked. Um, and it turned instead of being a triple threat WWE championship match that Kofi Kingston believed he was going to be in on, it was a handicap match against the bar. To be fair, Vince McMahon never said Kofi that he said he said it's going to be a triple threat match. He never specifically said Kofi, you're in a triple threat match for the WWE championship. He he didn't lie. Because mm-hmm. Mustafa Ali was in the uh, later, Mustafa Ali was introduced in the match, so we didn't lie. Technically, technically that's true. Um, Which is so Vince McMahon, <laughs> and I love what it. a businessman. <laughs> it's it. I hate. I don't know. I don't. I feel like I sh- I shouldn't like him as a person because I feel like he's a pretty vile human being. But <laughs> as a character, that's very Vince. <laughs> Um, I don't really have a rating for this because it was sort of a squash match. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a beatdown. It was sort of a beatdown. I will say though, um, that WWE has stolen another one of our ideas, Mikey. Yes, they have. Putting the bar in a handicap match at Fastlane. They did it. Unbelievable. They they keep doing this. Stuff. This time we didn't even see it coming. It wasn't no. even like a, it wasn't even like announced. They just like. They just rubbed it in our no. They just rubbed our noses in it. They're like, "Oh yeah, well we improvised your match, idiots." Our show dropped. They listened to it, and then literally an hour or two later, they were like, "You know what? Let's make this match a thing." They rubbed our noses in it. <laughs> God, 
God, I can't believe it. Um, yeah, I mean, the match was fine. There's nothing much to say of it. I mean, like I said, it's a sort of a squash. Um, they're really... Um, it really looks like it's setting up to some sort of match against Daniel Bryan with Kofi Kingston in the mix at WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, as much as I would love to see Dan Bryan and my baby boy Kevin Owens fight each other, because mm-hmm. holy shit, Kevin Owens, mm-hmm. looking fucking better than ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, match would be amazing, but also Daniel Bryan. And Kofi Kingston would also be amazing. And I'm so here for Kofi Mania. But then also Kevin Owens. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't yeah. want it to be a triple threat. Because shout out to Titan Fights, two dudes. is so much better for telling a story. We'll talk about it more when we get to the WWE Championship match. Yeah. But uh, it's definitely, like I said earlier, I don't know what's happening. It looks like we're going to get a lot of multi-man matches. Yeah, I think it's going to be I think they're le- they might lean towards triple threat Kofi Owens and Brian. Mhm. Um I don't know what they're doing with Mustafa. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe maybe a fatal four way. Maybe just he wins the uh Andre the Giant Battle Royal. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> One of those is like very good for him and the other one's like, "Oh no, what have you done?" Let's move on to the next matchup, which is a triple threat for the Raw Tag Team Championships with Ricochet and Aleister Black against Bobby Roode and Chad Gable against The Revival, the Raw Tag Team Champions, The Revival. Uh, I thought this was a great, you know, workhorse of a match. Um, it helped wake me up a little bit, plus the crowd um, yeah. following the f- these last two matches. Black and Ricochet um, almost- are so good. I almost feel like I have to rewatch the match a little bit to see it more in its proper light. Mm-hmm. Um, but despite that, a good, you know, all around good match. I liked it. Uh, this was this seemed to be the night of celebrations cut short because every time yeah. they were like, "This team win," it'd be like they wouldn't even get to finish their sentence before another tag team was just destroying them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. it's immediately the revival won, and Gable was already in there beating up on the revival. It's like what? <laughs> mm-hmm. He's like, and still, oh wait, <laughs> very interesting. Same thing very with the the women's tag match. It was like, and still, oh oh, Tamita's here. <laughs> oh crap! Oh jeez. Um, it's like yeah, they were I mean, late to break up the pins both times. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think about the matchup, Mikey? It was good. It was good. It was a lot of. It was nice and very nice tag team showing from every team involved. Uh, Black and Ricochet looked amazing as usual um i love when uh bobby rude like used black's foot to kick dawson in the face Mm -hmm. um that was funny Mm -hmm. i love the uh i love the spot where um uh, ricochet jumped over not only the top rope but jumped over the bear not barricade what's the word pole over the 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 ring post over the ring post and Chad Gable tagging himself in on that, that. That was very, that was very good where he was in the air and Chad Gable was like, no tag. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a great spot. It was a lot of, you know, it was a lot of, you know, decent, you know, decent, good spots in there. Um, uh, I liked, what was it like? It was like, uh, I think it was like Gable did a move. Someone else did a move. And then Ricochet does like a shooting star or some, some other high flying move. I think, I think Gable did, Gable did a uh, German, and he was pinning. I think Bobby Roode. No, no. Why would he? Why would he pin his own partner? <laughs> he was. Gable, I think he was pinning Gable Black. Was pinning Black. I think you're right. And then, and then uh, Dash, Wilder. Dash Wilder did a yeah. splash from the ropes, and then he landed, and then Ricochet shooting star pressed him. Yeah, that was just a great old spot. Yeah, um, it was a solid, you know, solid tag match. I don't. I wouldn't say the best match on the card, but it was definitely like a good workhorse, high high octane, high spot match to wake up the crowd up. Um, so yeah, I thought it was a good also match. Also, Black even... and Ricochet standing tall. Oh yeah, uh, very good point. Um, the fact that they're standing tall, you know, despite losing, they didn't get pinned. Mm-hmm. And they stood tall. Mm-hmm. WWE is really like pushing these two. <laughs> 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I with with Champa being out, I'm interested to see what they do with Gargano. Yeah. Um cuz obviously, you know, they got Ricochet and Black doing these tag matches and they're coming up real close to it. I would have sus- I would have suspected that this would have been DIY. Actually, I believe it would have been DIY. I think that made more sense because they beat the revival, right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I mean, so did. Uh, did Alistair and Black? Alistair and Black. Ricochet and Black. Alistair and Black. <laughs> I don't remember if they beat them, but they, I remember they came very close. Sounds like a law firm. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like this would have been DIY, and, you know, Ricochet and Black probably could have been off doing singles action stuff. Mm hmm. Uh, maybe in that United States Championship mix somewhere. There wasn't an Intercontinental match. There, there was not. There was not an Intercontinental Championship match. That is true. I think that would have been it. I think it would have been one of them two versus Finn Balor. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Instead of the handicap match we got with the Bar and Kofi, and maybe Alistair Black versus r Truth Samoa Joe. Yeah. Yeah, that that could have been something. I mean, the fact that Champa's out, I wonder what they're going to do with Gargano moving forward. I would love to see them call him up, and then once Black comes back, or not not Black, once Champa comes, there's so many names. Once Champa <laughs> comes back, uh, he goes back to like stop him. I guess you know. Mm-hmm. I don't know though. Yeah, I it, I really don't know. Um, other than that, I gave this match a 3.75 out of 5 meatballs. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, then let's move on to a surprise United States Championship matchup. A rematch, sort of, of last week on Tuesday's SmackDown Live. R-Truth against Andrade, against Mysterio, against United States Champion Samoa Joe. It was good. Yeah, I would agree with that. It was a good match. Uh, unexpected that we would get this match again. Yeah, that was weird. Uh, but I was fine with it because it was a good match. I agree. Yeah, they, for for being an Im- improvised like rematch that they had to I guess throw in, it was fine. I think it was very similar. You know, it was very similar to the last match, the match previous, Ricochet Black, the, the you know the Raw Tag Team Championship match. Mm-hmm. Uh, very good, good spots, fun spots of our truth. Heavy work put in by all four competitors. Our truth can still go at forty seven years old. I was like, our truth looked really good. Yeah, he's a legend. He is a legend. He, I could see him going for another. I could see him still wrestling at fifty. Like he is, he's still got it. Mm-hmm. He's able to keep up with Mysterio, Andrade, Samoa Joe. Like you know, it is a fatal four way, but he's able to keep up with them. Also, I liked how the I like the ending where Samoa Joe was just like just grabbed Ray by the tights and was like, "Get over here!" Oh yeah, it he is just, like ripped him into the coquina clutch. It is interesting. Uh, let, I would like to point out the fact that Samoa Joe on Tuesday, the reason he won the United States Championship is by pinning Andrade. And mm-hmm. here he was able to defend his championship by submitting Rey Mysterio. Yeah. just want to point that little fact out just as a very interesting thing. I, Andrade versus Rey has to be a media match coming up, right? Uh, Mikey, as we both know, there are not a lot of spots at Mania, and two dudes uh, is going to be tough to come by. I don't know if that matchup has enough firepower behind it, maybe, to be a two dudes. I think it's going to be a, a United States smorgasbord. It's going to be a championship scramble match. Yeah, I mean, if it's not John Cena versus... Uh, R-Truth. <laughs> R-Truth and Samoa Joe. Um you know, I mean, it, they could be United States John Championship. John Cena and R Truth teaming up with two other people. I don't know. Now that I say it, I mean, now that I say the, now that I think about it, I don't. The fact that Samoa Joe has pinned and or submitted both Andrade and Rey Mysterio, maybe they aren't going to be in the smorgasbord of WrestleMania. I can maybe see them being in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Yeah, I don't know. You know, know, sort of as like a a Mandy Rose, uh, Naomi type thing heading into uh, Royal Rumble where it was like, they could have a matchup, but really they're just going to have a spot in the the Battle Royal. I mean, I'd be pretty disappointed with that. What if it leads to Andrade winning the whole thing? Cool. But like, (laughs) what have Battle Royal winners done in the past? Like, Naomi won that other Battle Royal. What has she done? Nothing. Matt Hardy won it. What did he do? He won Mojo the, won it. 
Exactly. You, you're 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 proving my point here. Baron Corbin, Cesaro. See what I mean? Yeah. Winners I mean, of these true. battle royals do nothing. Yeah, but it would be a nice little spot to be like, here's the next big guy or something. I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't care. I just don't care about. I honestly don't. Never care about the battle royals. Big Show won one. I think they're always boring and mean nothing. Yep, that is true. Um, yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen there. Um, but uh, I gave this matchup a three point seven five out of four. Uh, not four, five. Three point seven five out of five meatballs. I'll go three point five. I thought it was fine. It was good. Very good. Let's move on to the women's tag team championship match of Boston Hug Connection, Sasha Banks and Bailey. What a terrible name. Going against Nia Jax and Tamina. Um, they do not have a name, but I remember Beth Phoenix saying, I believe she called them the human wrecking balls. Still very bad. Um, what it, is the women's division just all the bad tag team names? Boston Hug Connection, Fire and Desire, The Wrecking. Like, why are we just get better names? <laughs> I mean, nothing's going to beat the Country Club or Empresses of the Night. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think about this matchup, Mikey? It was good. It was fine. Like, yeah, Sasha and Bailey fair. did fine. Yeah. Tamita uh, and Naya were Tamita and Naya. I realized three things during this match. That Tamita and Naya are bad. <laughs> and putting them together amplifies the bad in both of them. No, that's half right. That's half right. I'll here's my three things I realized about this match. One, it was at this point I realized that I was kind of bored by this pay per view, um, because I, I was doing my, yeah no me too. I I realized I was trying to do my best to pay attention. and I was just like this is I just don't care about any of these matches. Yeah, I found myself on my phone a lot, and I was like, oh, I need to I need to pay attention to this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, and then I I had to bring myself to like watch it and pay attention. Yeah, it was. I, I'll be honest. I'm way too confused about any of the storylines. It's there's it's so many too, contenders. Because, like, so many possible. All the matches were fine, but mm-hmm. I still wasn't hooked. Like you know, like they were like the matches weren't bad, but I still couldn't bring myself to, to care about them. It's just too convoluted. Um, and on top of everything, the Raw Women's Champions telling us that everything's fake, so nothing matters. Yep. <laughs> Uh, the second thing I realized during this matchup was I will disagree with you, Mikey. To me, this matchup, Tamina can still go. I'll say it. I'll disagree. She worked hard in this match. Um, she could still. She was. She was working way harder than Nia Jax. She was. Nia Jax was a mess. <laughs> Did you see where Tamina tried to? She literally couldn't catch Sasha. No. Like- no, let, Tamina. Tamina in this matchup, I thought worked hard to put over Banks and Bailey very well. I thought she could still go. Uh, as someone, you know, we were unsure about booking Tamina a singles women championship match at Royal Rumble. I think this match proved that you know you give her the tap on the shoulder, she will step up and be able to you know sh- show off her her uh, her opponents. Nia Jax feels like Brock Lesnar to me. Um, mm, I will disagree. Because actually, here's here's why. Here's why. Here's why. Because when Brock Lesnar gets put in a match that he doesn't care about, he doesn't care. And when he's in the top spot, he doesn't really care unless it's a match he wants. Nia Jax just doesn't like Nia Jax has that mentality, but just all the time. <laughs> I will actually disagree with you, Mikey. I'm going to say Nia Jax is worse than Brock Lesnar. Okay. Why is that? Because she cares less? Brock Lesnar can sell anything. Yeah. Nia Jax can't. She can't. She can't sell well. Uh, I, I don't I don't think she sells well. I don't think she's that captivating of a performer. She can do the moves, I guess. But, you know, I mean, even then, she's hurt a lot of people in the ring. She's, she's hurt a, a lot track of people. Record. I've seen her do a backbreaker but drop the wrong knee, which is always funny. Yeah, she's done a lot of mistakes in the wrestling ring, and, you know, I understand that she is a heel, that she is a powerhouse, um, she's a Samoan, but there are plenty more Samoans that are more charismatic, the Rock, uh, the Usos, the... Roman uh, Reigns! Roman Reigns, and maybe she's, you know, this heel persona can't show off her charisma as much, but you gotta give me... The Rock was more charismatic as a 
heel. The Usos are more charismatic as a heel. Roman Reigns is he- waiting to for that to happen. Roman Reigns is never going to be a heel. You cannot tell me otherwise. When you have big wrestlers like, and let, we can maybe talk about size. If you have big wrestlers like Samoa Joe, Keith Lee, Rowan even, uh, Jordan Grace from Impact, you know, all these wrestlers around the world, Ace Romero, you have all these other big name wrestlers that can not only be ener- energetic and not only be captivating as wrestlers, but they can also do a lot of moves. The fact that Keith Lee can do like a moonsault, the fact that, you know, Samoa Brock Joe Lester can do a moonsault. Yeah, like... Brock Lesnar can do a moonsault. You know, Rowan was did really well, and Rowan can Brock sell. Brock Lesnar could do a shooting star. Yeah. Um, Samoa Joe can do a lot of moves. I mean, he's more technically, you know, striker-based, but he's still doing these moves. I mean, Nia Jax, I don't know what she is supposed to be. Yeah. Um, and I don't think she sells well. And there was a moment where... She always ends up just looking clumsy is the issue. Yeah, agreed. There was a moment where, you know, you know that Sa- Sasha Banks did that jump to the outside and they barely caught her. And then Bailey did a, you know, dive to the outside and they all were like out on the ground. Mm-hmm. Everyone was selling. Nia Jax's selling was her just laying on the ground with her eyes closed. She wasn't moving. She looked dead. Um... Just she like in bl- Elimination Chamber where Bailey was completely out of position for the the pod spear and she just it looks like she just ran into the pod for no reason. Yeah. Like there was she, no way in hell she was hitting Bailey from where she was, and then Bailey just had to go like eh. I compared to Banks, Bailey, and Tamina, Nia Jax to me personally looked bad in this match. Yeah. Um and it was no it was no fault of anyone else. I think it was all on Naya. You know, Usually is. She didn't really do that many things in this matchup. Yet she um, keeps getting rewarded. Here she is in the title scene again. I mean, yeah. I sh- And then let's talk about post-match. Um, Beth Phoenix seems to be coming out. Maybe, come, I don't know if it's coming out of retirement, but coming out of something, the commentary booth, and Natalia saving her after being attacked by Nia Jackson Tamina. It looks like we're getting um, the reformation uh, what was it? Something of Doom, Domination of Doom, Tower. I don't know. I have um, no of idea. Natalia and Beth Phoenix from possibly the women's tag titles of WrestleMania. I would imagine Sasha Banks and Bailey, of course, being involved. I would imagine Nia Jax and Tamina oh, you mean also the women's being tag involved. Team champions would be involved in the women's tag team championship match. Bold. Who would have guessed it? <laughs> Bold. Um, I would imagine it seems like Nia Jax and Tamina get involved. Tamina and Beth Phoenix, obviously having some uh, history. Um, throw in a SmackDown team, maybe, maybe throw in an NXT team while you're at it. Sky um, Pirates, Sky Pirates, Sky Pirates, Sky Pirates. I don't know who who it could be. Um, maybe Jessamine Duke and Maria Schaefer. Ryan, Kyrie Sane. Maybe I don't know. Vanessa Bourne, uh, Tanaya, Tanara Conti. The Pirate Princess. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know who it could be. Um. There's not many t- women's tag teams on NXT that I can think of. Um, but whoever, whomever <laughs> it may be, Mikey, it looks like Nia Jackson to me will still be in there. I don't think they'll win, but, you know, it's interesting because Nia Jax's heel turn, you know, she was going to turn heel anyways, but her heel turn and her getting on this heat result was the result of a botch where she accidentally punched Becky Lynch so hard. It Still broke mad her face. for that. Um, and then she got all the heat. That heat, to me, is all died down. It's be- It's also bad heat. <laughs> I don't think it's the writers. I don't it's think not, it's anyone else. I it's think it's Nia Jax's fault. Want. I just if think I it's not the, heat you want. If I had to put the blame on someone, I would say it's Nia Jax's fault. I don't, I don't think she's a great wrestler. I don't think she's a great performer. Uh, I think... She can act well in spots, but like like a Brock Lesnar, you said, if she doesn't care about it, then who cares? Not not her. Care. That's the thing. She doesn't care about anything. Like Brock Lesnar, if he's in a match he cares about that's new and fresh and that he likes, he will work his ass off. Like oh, look yeah. at look at look at Brock Lesnar, Finn Balor. That match was nuts. Brock mm-hmm. Lesnar sold like death for Finn. Finn mm-hmm. looked great. Brock looked great. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> Nia Jax just never cares because no matter what happens, she keeps getting the top spot. No matter because... how bad she does, no matter how much she messes up, she keeps getting title matches. She keeps getting put in the title scene. She keeps getting put in the big picture. And uh, uh. yeah, it's she. Like we both know, Mikey, from our Hit the Books show, um, where we book SmackDown Live two hours, all the storylines, all the matches of every SmackDown Live uh, every Tuesday. Subscribe now. Um, as we both know, Mikey. Nice plug, nice plug. Thank you. As we both know, Mikey, um, there aren't a lot of women on the roster. Um, and when you have someone, uh, when you have a character like Nia Jax, who can be a, a you know a big old powerhouse heel, uh, like this mo- sort of like the monster character, like a big show. We um, we also saw that Tamina could apparently do that better. <laughs> great point. So get rid of Naya, put Tamina where Naya is, and boom, we have someone who tries, someone who's better than Naya, who knows the who actually knows the basics, and could perform. It is all true. That is all true. Um, what was your meatball rating on this matchup, Mikey? I don't know. I was bored, so like a, I don't know, a two. Like, I, I like it. I like Bailey and Sasha because they tried their damnedest to make this match good. That's true. That's true. I gave this uh the gentleman's three. Three meatballs. Um, I'll stick I'll stick with my two. Yeah. Uh you know, just Nia Jax sort of just really was the worst part of the match for me. As much as I hate burying Nia Jax, um, I don't think she's that great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Tamina and Sasha Banks and Bailey did well. I thought there was a nice post match. Um, again, post match beatdown. Um, no one could celebrate tonight. If you tried to celebrate, you got beat up. That's it. Miz, Miz tried to get his, Miz tried to get a little bit of celebration because he's like, oh, I put on a good performance in my hometown, and I'm, and everyone's behind me, and I'm liking my, home, and he got beat up by Shane. Friggin' Revival one, they got beat up by by everybody. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Everyone's just getting beat up for celebrating and being happy. <laughs> um, let's move on, Mikey, to the WWE Championship match. Uh, turned out to be, in fact, a triple threat match with Daniel Bryan against Kevin Owens against Mustafa Ali. Um, I love, I just want to say I loved how much everyone booed Mustafa Ali at the beginning of this match. Uh, you know, Kofi that and running wild was rough. Um, but I would say this Ali and Owens were able to turn it around. Yeah, no, Ali turned Ali definitely turned the crowd onto his side. Um, because they were all expecting Kofi, and they <laughs> they got cucked. So I see why they were upset, but also like just respect the performer, man. Like he's doing his best. He didn't do anything to hurt you guys. This isn't his decision. Just. Just respect, just respect Mustafa, and they, they they came like they said they came around, but still, it was the same sort of boo that Rey Mysterio got at the Royal Rumble a couple years ago mm-hmm. when the crowd wanted Daniel Bryan instead. Rey Mysterio mm-hmm. came out. You never would have expected them to boo Rey Mysterio, but all of a sudden the crowd is. Um, I it, it, I think Mustafa Ali though, you know he was able to turn around, able to get, get the cheers back on his side. He's mm-hmm. not a heel. He's a still face. Um, you know, he has the experience of turning a dead crowd or a crowd against you into people that cheer for you. Look at any kickoff cruiserweight match, <laughs> um, any 205 live match. He mm. can put in the work to get the crowd on his side. Definitely. That's how, that, if anything, goes to show how great a, of a performer Mustafa Ali is. Um, what do you think of the matchup, though, Mikey? What do you think about this triple threat? Um, I thought it was good. It was a really good match. I had a really fun time watching it. Kevin Owens almost died. <laughs> right? That 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 somersault, almost hitting his skull on the table. He almost cracked his head on the announce table. Oh my god, Kevin Owens was like two inches from death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It was very. He close. knew it too. He got up and was like, "That was." I think. I think what that was was like, a, like him just letting out his adrenaline because oh my god, he almost died. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He like stood up and just started bashing on the table, and he was like, "How am I alive?" Speaking about death, that uh, the finish to this matchup, that mid-air running knee from Brian to Ali, 
Oh my god, that looks. Or brutal. the four fifty on the apron. Jeez. <laughs> god, there's these brutal, brutal looking spots. Oh my god. Kevin Owens brought back the pop up power bomb. <laughs> <laughs> it's not he a way. He it. still has it. He did it. I was so excited when I saw it. Yeah, I, I thought this it. was a great match. Oh. I thought it was a really good match. It was um, very good. To me personally, the match of the night. Yeah, of course. Because um, Daniel Bryan and Kevin Owens, like with Mustafa, it's like it's, it's like those three people by themselves are amazing. Put them together. What do you expect? Like we said before, Mikey, I want to ask the question: Where do we go from from here? You know, the obvious thought is you know, a Kofi Brian matchup at WrestleMania. But how do we get there is the question. There's so many storylines, so many people involved. I could see a triple threat, you know, Brian Owens, Kofi. I could see, you know, throwing Ali in there. It's probably going to be a fatal four way. It's just like, I don't, it feels like they're building a fatal four way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it feels like, you know, maybe, Kofi Musta- it's like, pins. look, Mustafa's back. Look, Kevin Owens is back. Kevin Owens, it's going to be Kofi Mania. Like, they're trying... Like, or Kevin Owens is going to... Be, Kofi Kingston, it's going to be Kofi Mania. Like, they're trying... They're working all these angles. And I think it, it feels like it's going to be a fatal four-way. Yeah, it feels like it has to be. Yeah. There's just too much show. Yeah. It does feel like almost every single match is going to be multi-man, and that's not great. Um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of that. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, this this was my match of the night. This was I mean, a we're going to get AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. That's true, I guess. Hooray, I guess. like <laughs> This matchup was a triple threat, was a multi-man match, so I, I, and it was my match of the night, so I guess that's I like them sometimes, but... Uh, there's a lot of them. There's only so many spots you could do, and uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, the road to WrestleMania is very unclear. There's I have my fog lights on. Uh, there's rain pouring down. There's very little visibility in my <laughs> the windshield. windshield wipers aren't working well. Uh, yeah, I called Yamaha, and they said that they only do engines. <laughs> um. So that's not helping. They only they only do fast engines for fast lanes. Apparently, I mean, I I would like to say, Mikey, I did like the fact that whenever the replay or anything came in and out, it was always the the Doppler effect sound of a car going by, like neural. <laughs> I was a big fan of that. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, I mean, WrestleMania is very unclear. I feel like not just for the fans, but maybe the writers as well. I feel like it's been a while since a WrestleMania wasn't like by fast lane to find like basically the fine card. We have two matches that are certain. And it's triple threat for the Raw Women's Championship, Becky, Ronda, Charlotte. And it's Seth versus Brock. That's it. I mean, and you can maybe make an argument in the writer's room of pitching the idea of like, Let's throw in Roman. They, I, I hope they don't. I mean, either, but I, you can make that pitch. I don't think they. I don't think they will. No, I think you save that. I think you save it. I think because because if you save it, you can ju- you can get you have a built in storyline. You have it like it's there. Mm-hmm. Storyline is there. It's like Seth beats Brock. Seth comes back to Raw and he says, um. I'm so glad I'm the Universal Champion, but someone else has to be first in line. Roman, you never lost it. Here's your chance to get it back. And it's going to be Seth Roman. Boom. At SummerSlam or something, you know? Like, it's there. It's there. Just take it. Or take it and run Roman with it. wins Money in the Bank? Yeah. Ooh. That would be spicy. If Roman won Money in the Bank and cashed it on Seth like Seth did to him. <gasps> There's the pitch is there, and you can maybe get another, you know, at some other pay per view Roman against Brock Lesnar, maybe you know a non title. You know, you know, I think I'm good on Roman versus Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Why do you want five more matches though? I'm super good on Roman versus Brock. I don't need to see another Roman Lesnar match for the rest of my fucking life, and I'll be happy. Well, what about the matchup though? WrestleMania is unclear. There's two matches so far. 
everything else. We have four weeks to figure out what we're doing. Um, <laughs> Mikey, that is, if it's going to be the same number as as I suspect of fifteen matches. Mm -hmm. You have four weeks to figure out thirteen of those. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a rough and tumble fort. And I'm not, I'm not even excluding like the fact that there's got to be a, you know, a, some some more storyline of R Ronda, Lynch, and Flair, or more storyline of Brock and Seth. You have five hours in the week to book. You have what five hours in the week times four weeks. You have twenty hours to book thirteen matches. Sounds like a lot of time, but really it's not. You and I both know that. Mm-hmm. You and I are struggling over one. <laughs> yeah. Um, listen, hit the books every Tuesday to figure out which one. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's a lot of lot of work to do in that writers room, and I do not envy their job. Uh, I gave this match a four point two five out of five meatballs. I'll stick. I'll go with a four point five. I thought it was very good. It's the one match that kept me hooked basically the whole time. Um, let's move on to Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair, um, where uh, during the match, the Becky Lynch gets the victory via disqualification when Ronda Rousey comes out and attacked Becky Lynch, allowing Becky to pick up the victory. Um, Mikey, what are your thoughts on this match? Nah. Which is weird to say uh, in a Becky Charlotte match. But it was meh. Yeah, uh, it was meh. Um, like we said before, it was basically Charlotte gloating the whole time, and then Ronda being like, "Hey, fuck you, Charlotte," and leaving. Yeah, good heel <laughs> stuff from Charlotte. But like we said before, you know, this wasn't a match match. This was a storyline match. Yep. Um, you know, Becky Lynch can only do so much with all of her body being injured. Becky can only do so much with her injured knee yeah which we all know is fake thank you Rhonda. <laughs> thanks Rhonda. ruin the kayfabe i Typical. i i get Rhonda getting involved here and forcing the triple threat yeah because she wanted becky yeah but one punch one punch Rhonda does to becky i Lynch. get i get i get it i get it she was just like if she did a beatdown, it would have looked too heel again. It would have looked, it would have looked more like she was trying to beat down Becky and get her at like, like it. It's this whole thing that Becky keeps saying, right? Where it's like, Rhonda, do you want me in or do you want me out? And if she beat up Becky and injured her even more, like and actually went all out. Becky probably wouldn't have been able to be in the match because of how injured she was, you know? So one punch makes sense to me. Because, like, she wants to get Charlotte DQ'd, but she also doesn't want to hurt Becky too bad. So just, like, one nice shot and just being like, that's it. I'm done. She, you're in the match. Peace. I disagree wholeheartedly. Um, Why? Because Ronda has turned heel and the past two weeks has beaten Becky Lynch supremely bad. We're putting on this ar argument that she hates her, not only on TV, but o all over Twitter. You know, she's nowhere Mrs. Nice Bitch, whatever her line was. <laughs> that was so, she's um, so bad at promos. <laughs> like, like, to me, that was like, the least she could do is punch Becky Lynch once. Helps out everyone. Becky Lynch is in the match. You know, she if she, if, but if Ronda truly hated Lynch but wanted to wrestle her at WrestleMania, why not just beat her down and then Lynch wins by disqualification? I mean, if anything, I think that that goes to show how badly this storyline has been done. Mm -hmm. um, it's so messed up. Look at the promo video before the match started. So much of the storyline was cut out. Yeah. This match was, you know, Ron, uh, Becky Lynch winning the Rumble, Flair's replacing Becky Lynch. Um, because of her injured knee. 
Then the I think it was Which the make, next well, thing still was, makes no sense to me because what actually happened to her at the rumble to make her injure her knee that bad did not look too, like Naya shoved her off the stairs. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 the most unbelievable part about this whole thing to me is that she got an injury this bad from just being shoved. <laughs> yeah, well, and then and then of course you know Charlotte Flair attacking it during the match. But still, even even before that, she was still like hobbling around on a crutch, like it was like she got her knee like snapped in three thousand pieces you know like her mm-hmm. knee shattered or something mm-hmm. i i mean the just look at the promo video about beforehand about how messed up the storyline is i mean i thought the match was fine it it did what it ha- it was what it had to be it's just so confusing that hot take i guess i've completely pretty much lost interest in this match for wrestlemania I lost interest as soon as they introduced Charlotte. Yeah. Honestly. That made it that made it way too convoluted and that that ruined every cuz now they're trying to get heat on Charlotte while also trying to get heat on Becky while also trying to get heat on Ronda and no one seems to be the fa- they they all seem to be heelish <laughs> except for Becky Lynch who's like a tweener at most. <laughs> I mean it's not great. <laughs> it's not great. It's gotten so convoluted, so confusing. They've gone back and forth on so many different things that I don't know. And it, it literally pains me to say that, but I do not, I don't have interest in this match. Um, it went from being my must see matchup from survivor series, must see matchup at, you know, at the Royal rumble, Becky and Rhonda, just those two would be fire. Yeah, and I think the but purpose Charlotte, of Charlotte, like, <sighs> I think the purpose of adding Charlotte Flair is so that Ronda doesn't get pinned. But you know, so she should Ronda get pinned. Doesn't get pinned, and also, I don't know if Ronda can carry a long form match with Becky by herself. I think if she could do it. I don't know if it was Becky Becky Ronda main event. I heard a very good argument that Ronda might not be able to like carry the whole like like wrestle the whole match and keep it long and also have it look good the whole time with just Becky but with Charlotte in there it kind of covers her tracks a little bit I mean when you say long what how long are you thinking well I figured they would have given Becky Ronda like a solid I don't know like I over, would over under 20 minutes I would say like 25. It's the match everyone wants to see. It's going to be the main event. Like let them fight. And they and and they they despise each other. Just let them fight. I think they would have given them the time. I think if it was just Ronda Becky Lynch, they could have easily been the main event. It all would have been less convoluted. Um, you know, they're doing the storyline both on Raw and SmackDown, so it's just getting even more booked. You know, they have to come up with something new whenever, on Tuesday and something new on Monday. It's just a lot that you got to do. Um, personally, again, it literally pains me. I do not want to be saying this. If I was booking WrestleMania, if I had to put the card together, you know, who is the main event? I don't think this match is the main event anymore. Not if it's a triple threat, it's not. I mean, I think, I think your main event could be... The Universal Championship. I think it could be WWE Championship. I think it could be something else uh, entirely. Yeah, you know? it should it should have been Becky Ronda, but Charlotte being included made this way too complicated. I think what should have happened is have them do the thing where they're like, "Oh, Charlotte's replacing Becky," <laughs> and then Becky injures Charlotte, so we go back to Becky Ronda. Can I give a can I give a That's bold it. theory here? Two dudes. Can I give a very bold theory? Go. I think Charlotte Flair was added to this match because Ronda Rousey doesn't work SmackDown Live. She has off Tuesdays. Okay. So, if you were booking it. And Ronda Rousey cannot work on Tuesday. She cannot show up at SmackDown Live. You're going to have every SmackDown Live moving forward from Royal Rumble to WrestleMania, however months that is, was that four months, be every Tuesday Becky Lynch trash-talking Ronda? Just 
just let her be on Raw then. She didn't have to be on. Like, I know she's on SmackDown, but if she's in this feud with Ronda, just have her be on Raw for those weeks. Like, I'd be okay with not seeing Becky on SmackDown if it meant a sick build for Mania. If her and Ronda were just feuding on Raw every week. Mm-hmm. I think I'd be fine not seeing Becky on SmackDown, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I'd... And... And... It would make me tune in for Raw. True. That is true. It's, it's just very convoluted. And it's just, you know, it's... There's a lot happening. And... Who knows? I mean, who knows at this point? Um, I gave this match a 2.75 you know, for what it was. Yeah. Two and a half. I'm so upset with myself for giving it low ratings, but it's like... No, no, no. It's not your fault. It's WWE's fault for messing up this whole thing, making it a triple threat when it should have been one-on-one this whole time, and just ruining... And Becky's cooling down. That's true. Becky's not as hot as she was. That is true. And it's ruining the build a little bit. Yeah. Because she's doing because she's doing the same thing every week. She's hobbling to the ring, beating people up with her crutch, and she's leaving. That is true. Um, well, then let's move on into our main event. It was the reunion, the last ride, the last tour of The Shield. The Hounds of Justice return for one last time against Baron Corbin, or Constable, whatever he is, Corbin. <laughs> Um, Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre. Um, Shield ended up getting the victory of Roman Reigns pinning Corbin in the ring. Of course. Um, Corbin gets pinned by a guy who is out for five months. Uh, of course no, Roman no, was getting... No ring of, rust on Roman Reigns. Of course Roman was getting the pin. Of course Roman was getting the pin. I, if Shield if Shield was winning, Roman was getting, was getting the pin. Maybe it's because I am a fan of New Japan Pro Wrestling, but surely this guy would have had some ring rust from not wrestling. Surely he wasn't able to wrestle for and train for all these weeks. Um, surely he has ring rust, but no. Not only does he not have ring rust, he's able to get the victory and pin the guy. To be fair, Roman didn't have much. Like he did a he did like a hot tag, and then a Superman punch and like a spear and like some of the power bombs. That's maybe true. But I, I do want to say that, like, maybe it is because I'm a New Japan guy a little bit. But it's just, like, realistically, come on, guys. I mean, he's not going to really... You see, but you see, Ryan, you're, you're, since, since, you're, since you're in the indie headspace, you don't get it. I'm in the WWE headspace all the time because that's all I know. That's so I true. knew, I knew that they were going to put, that they were going to have Roman get the pin. There was no way they wouldn't in WWE... If, especially with Roman, with how they've been treating him, especially like before all of this, he was always trying to go over. Always, they were try, always trying to get him over. Always trying to get him over. Always trying to get him over. He was booked as the top guy, and he returned after six months of being away. And you think he wouldn't get the pin? I just don't know what's going to be happen with Corbin moving forward. I mean, Corbin who now cares? has taken a pin by a guy who is out for six months. I don't care about Corbin. <laughs> Hot take, don't give a shit. <laughs> Cold take, lukewarm. Corbin is boring. This this stable of those three are boring. The only cool one is Drew McIntyre. Get at me. Bobby Lashley, I'm bored with. He's just doing the same thing of like, I'm Bobby Lashley, I'm strong, I win all the matches. Bah, bah, bah. Bobby Lashley. Uh, we have Baron Corbin. Good one. We have Baron Corbin, Mister. I wrestle in a fucking in fucking skinny in fucking slacks and a button down and <laughs> nice shoes. I I wrestle like I'm going to a funeral. Oh, uh, his opponent's funeral. There it is. Da-da. Nailed it. Uh, Baron Corbin wrestles like he's got like he he dresses like he's going to a funeral, not a wrestling match. Uh, and all of his moves are just like nah, I'm gonna punch you. I got the deep six. I did it. Um, I mean, go ahead. It's like Let's deep not... six and deep six end of days rest holds and random punching. Well, and he's got that big boss man spot where he runs underneath the turn the underneath the bottom rope and goes around the other side. That always looks cool. I guess. I I mean that I think. I mean, 
Yeah, his his cool spots are that big boss man spot, the end of days, and the la- what is it? The last right? No, uh, six, deep six, deep, deep six. six yeah. Get put on a, a, a skinny guy like Sami Zayn looks amazing. Um, Bigger guy like Roman Reigns, eh. it's fine. But end of days is the currently, to my knowledge, the most protected move in WWE. I don't yes, think a single person true. has pinned that, out at the end of days. That is one hundred percent true. They are definitely protecting the end of days, and the only way Roman got out of it was because the shield broke up the pin. I thought for a second Roman was going to kick out of the end of days. I honestly, I thought that if that if the shield didn't break up the pin, it was going to be a three count. I think they would put the end of days over Roman. That is a question. That is a oh my god! As a bold. Oh I thought they were going to do it. I like. I knew the shield was going to win, but there was that split second where he hit the end of days, where I was like, "Oh shit, was I wrong?" Oh my god, what it, would they put over the end of days over Roman? What? It, that's a question for another day. They, hey gotta, man, they got look, to like. I gotta let that they, marinate. I was like, hey man, they got to like two point seven five on that count before the shield broke it up. So. <sighs> Let's also talk about the fact that this was the main event matchup. Of course, you know, some people believing that it should have been Lynch Flair, maybe the WWE Championship matchup. But this if matchup Lynch Flair gets... was the main event, that would have been a mess because oh. that match was not good. Yeah, I could see why it wasn't the main event. Um, but let's talk about that for, that part. I mean, whether or not um, Dean Ambrose leaving is real or fake or whatever it is, whether or not that is the case, l- stick with kayfabe here. What what is kayfabe? It doesn't exist anymore. Thanks, Ronda. Um, Thanks, Rhonda. Assuming that you have to assume that it is I mean, going to be his us, last right? match. What's that? I said fuck us, right? Like fuck the WWE universe, right? Oh yeah, perfect. Um, like assuming that he is leaving, there is no reason why this match wouldn't have been the main event. Um, I mean, personally, I believe Dean is really living leaving. So you know, you got to give Shield your, your. They've been on. They were on top for years. You know. Um, they were your biggest thing for the past couple of years. Um, so, you know, Dean has to get, you know, given that one last moment, I don't know if he has WrestleMania match. I can maybe see him versus Roman, mm-hmm. but I mean, that's the only one I can maybe think of, uh, um, bold, bold, maybe make it, you know, loser leaves WWE. Uh, that'd, be, that'd be stupid. We already know he's leaving. Um, <laughs> we already know he's leaving and Roman just came back. Dean Ambrose contract on a pole match. <laughs> if Roman gets it, Dean Ambrose has to sign it. I don't know. Something dumb, dumb. Um, either way, uh, good chaotic match. He Seemed wants like to a- leave so bad. He has to beat Roman for it. Oh my God. I can see that maybe being the storyline for Dean, but I mean, whether or not he gets a Roman, you know, gets a WrestleMania match, this could easily be his last put, maybe put over some other guys like EC three or something or Gargano or someone. Uh, you know, or, or EC one and two, yeah, just put over something. Um, you, you know, good chaotic match seemed like a classic Shield match. Mac, Mikey, what do you think of this matchup? Uh, I liked it. It was like you said, classic Shield. Uh, like I liked. I thought it was good. I thought it was really good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching the Shield back in action. I loved watching Triple Power Bomb again. I loved. Uh, just all the moments they had, like the double suicide dive on Seth and Dean, and then Roman coming in with his crazy suicide dive that he does. It was just, it was just good. It was a good Shield match, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching them back in action. Seth, Seth's uh, bulletproof vest though was hanging on by like threads by the end. <laughs> <laughs> this match was a very good nostalgia trip. Yeah. Um, which may, makes me feel like it's, you know, it is Dean's last. Last um, ride. It, it is true. I mean, if it's not true and it's a work, I'd be upset. Yeah, a little bit. Just not at like, not at like anyone, but I'd just be like, okay, well. Huh. What it, was that whole thing I mean, for? You made me care huh. about something that ultimately doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> but that, but, but that would be very WWE, wouldn't it? I guess. But you know, I think they made us care about they made us care about Ronda versus Becky. Yeah, I think you can make this turn into a, a, a tag team match: Roman and Dean versus McIntyre and Corbin at WrestleMania. Maybe, like yeah. we all said, 
fucking, I don't know, idea what WrestleMania is going to look like this year. Just let Drew McIntyre be his own person. I mean, I could, I think McIntyre. Let Drew McIntyre, I swear to God, if Rollins, because, holy shit, if Rollins doesn't win this universal title at WrestleMania, I have no idea what to expect anymore. I just don't know. If Brock retains his title, I just do not know. I'll be honest. If Roman was still out, and he, Roman was officially out past WrestleMania, I f- could see Seth Rollins winning. With Roman back and healthy, I don't oh know. Oh my god, they're gonna! Oh my god, please don't! Don't you say it! Don't you fucking say I that Brock see, is gonna! Don't you fucking say I could that Brock! See, is, don't do it, Ryan. I can see the Sky Pirates in the tag team match. Oh, that you could say. That's fine. <laughs> I accept that one. <laughs> but don't you say that goddamn Brock Lesnar is going to retain at Mania just to fucking fight Roman again. I could see it, dude. I could see it. That's the problem. Ugh, I would If they do, I'm going to throw up. If I see another goddamn Roman versus Brock match, I'm going to throw up. I mean, fucking, what is Braun doing at WrestleMania? Nothing. He has what nothing is Braun right been now. doing at all? <laughs> He has last time nothing. we saw, last time we saw Braun, he got destroyed again by the stupid trio of Corbin, Drew McIntyre, and Lashley. They, what, what is what is Strowman? You got Strowman has nothing. Strowman's it probably gonna like team with Nicholas again or something. I don't know. It looks like Strowman's gonna be the ma- battle royal. Strowman's gonna Strowman's gonna be in another tag team match, and he's gonna get another six, another like twelve year old to be his tag team partner. I would again. I would love Nicholas to come back. I would love it's gonna for be him Nicholas to come back. versus Braun. <laughs> oh, I would love if Nicholas was in the battle royal. Oh, the Nicholas in the battle royal and Braun's just defending him the entire time. And then Nicholas eliminates him. <laughs> That'd be great. I would love it. Oh my God, <laughs> I would love it so much. I would quite. I would, and then I would love that beats so much. Braun Nicholas beats out Nicholas. <laughs> Like it's funny. It would be funny the second time. Braun puts Nicholas through the announce table. I mean, he's got to do something. I mean, Braun's got to do something. He was your biggest guy, and now he's nothing because of this stupid trio they're trying to put over. Um, and which they put over. You know, they put over. You know, decimation of Braun just so they can have this shield match. And now it's like, okay, now they lost. They're trying to make a new shield. <laughs> They're trying to make a new shield. Who Literally, knows? They did. They did the whole. They did the whole thing. Shield used to do where they would like have like the phone camera and they did. The, they cut their own promo on like the phone camera with one person holding it. Well, I think that was just. They're just. You know, I don't think they're trying to make a new shield. I think they're just like poking fun at the shield. They're just being heels. Because they did all the shield old moves and stuff. I don't think they're purposely doing something new. I think they're they, just they kind of the triple power bomb. They did the thing. Like they're just trying. It's like. It's like they're just trying to have a heel version of the shield, but like, I don't, I don't like it. Not exactly the shield, but like, not like not like what they did, but like, you know what I mean? Just another stupid trio for no reason. Like, not stupid. Shield was great. This this faction is not. <laughs> um, I gave this match a four out of five meatballs, Mikey. What did you give it? I'm in agreement with you there. A fourver? A fourer? Fourer? A four four four? That, yeah, you're right. That's hard. That's... For better or for four, you've given yeah, it a four. Solid four. <laughs> a solid four. Uh, and that is it. That We wrapped it up. That is our pay-per-view of Fastlane. A lot of confusion on our parts. Um, we don't know what's, what's happening moving forward. WrestleMania is quite the blur. Um, but I guess we are excited to see what happens. <laughs> We're excited? I don't know. I literally don't know what's going to happen. Will Drew McIntyre have a match? I don't know. Um, Who knows what's going to happen? But this has been Fastlane. This has been our paper review of Fastlane. Of course, Ryan, Ryan, I'm saying in the third person, Ryan and Mikey, <laughs> um, we do a show called Hit the Books. That is us booking SmackDown Live every week, all two hours of SmackDown Live, all matches, all storylines, all segments. We're currently on our own path to WrestleMania with our own roster. Mm-hmm. So if you would like to listen to that 
please go and look up on iTunes or Spotify or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Look up Hit the Books, and it should be there, a little blue logo. Uh, and subscribe and listen. And why, are, why, why don't you listen? Why not listen, love, fall in love with Mikey, maybe? Um, just rate and review while you're at it, while you're down there. Uh, say how much you've fallen in love Give with Mikey's eyes meatballs. or something. Um, Mikey, where else can people find us? They can find us on Twitter at Hit the Books Pod, where we do our uh, booking and excitometer polls for our other, our main podcast, Hit the Books. And you can find us on YouTube, where we put these, obviously, because you found us. <laughs> <laughs> you found it. You found it. You're here. Be better might as at well, least subscribe. Might as well, hit that bell might as well or subscribe. Might as well subscribe. Give it a thumbs up and hit the bell. You gotta do something. Oh, uh, you all, why you got to Stick it to the man by messing up YouTube's algorithms and liking us. Yeah, why not? Uh, why not mess up YouTube's algorithm? Re- algorithm? Oh, God. Stick it to the man, dude. My mouth is so dry. We got to end this, Mikey. Let's do it. Oh, my gosh. Well, that is all of us. Ryan and Mikey um, here at Hit the Books for paper review. Subscribe to everything. Follow us on everything. And everybody, Mikey, you know the closer. Oh, fuck, I forgot. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Have a nice day. <laughs> See ya. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> How do I keep forgetting? Hold one. Arm drag. Don't tell me. Bye, bye, bye.